at 7 o'clock somewhere. Yeah, sure. All right. Thank you. 7 o'clock. All right, uh, meeting of the Deerfield Conservation Commission, February 22nd, 2018. Members present, Ben Byrne, Steve Barrett. Matt Ainsworth, Louis Mission. All right, we have a, not a large agenda this evening. Uh, first up, we have Michael Colleen, who filed a request for the termination of applicability um, for 112 Sunderland Road uh, for whether the work depicted on the plans referenced below is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, Louie and I did a site visit this afternoon, but before that, because this has been a little bit, um, there's been a lot of talk about this particular application, I did call DEP and spoke to Mark Stinson. And basically, he pulled up all of the computer images showing wetlands, et cetera, et cetera. And felt that there were, this was not a jurisdictional situation for the CONCOM. I tend to defer to DEP, and then Lou and I did the site visit this afternoon. We really didn't see anything that would have. No issues that I, I could see. So the decision recommended by Mark was to give a negative four which is the work described in the request is not in an area subject to protection under the act, including the buffer zone. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent unless and until said work alters an area subject to protection under the act. So I'm gonna make a motion we go with that. Second. Aye. 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 Negative. Negative four. <clears throat> So you're set, Mr. Colleen. Do I get like a copy of that in the mail? That again? will be mailed to you by the, uh, I'll turn it into the office tomorrow and copies will be mailed out to you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. No problem. Like I said, we're here from the government. <laughs> Where to help? <laughs> I'm starting to restore my trust. <laughs> yeah, that was the easiest one of these I've ever had. Well. <laughs> When you've I guess got, that's what happens when you go to ComCom and you don't live in wetlands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you've got DEP, <laughs> if you don't work. have an issue. Then that's it. <laughs> All right, so that's one down. All right. The second item we have in front of us is an RDA filed for 225 Upper Road, which is the repair of a septic system. And I spoke to uh, Alan Weiss from Cold Spring Environmental over in Bernardston. And we have the plans here. There are some wetlands <coughs> issues there. But again, we're talking replacement of an existing septic system, which we have always erred on the side of not taking somebody's property from them. So you can see on this plan, I'll start with you the house, the line coming in, the new system, the siltation controls coming all the way around to protect the wetlands that are within the 50 foot area. You got the new system in, existing house, they're taking the disposal out and new, and then the siltation fence coming around to you get 50 foot to the board and vegetative wetland. That's the old one? Yep. Yeah, I'm moving away. Oh, 150 feet. Okay, that's a good little distance here. Tupper Road. It is longer than I thought, Lou. Yeah. Existing deck. So this was filed for Raymond Burnham and Brenda Bialecki by Don Malu. The plan was put together by Alan Weiss from Cold Spring Environmental. And again, this is whether the work depicted on the plans referenced below is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. So, 
far as our determination of applicability. We have repair as per attached plan prepared by Cold Spring Environmental Siltation Control noted on plan, limit of work rating with the, within the 100 foot BVW buffer, 50 foot fill limit. So. Number three would be the work described in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the regulations, but will not alter an area subject to protection under the act. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent subject to the following conditions. I would propose that we take the plan <coughs> submitted with the date that is constructed as per that plan. That way we make sure that the siltation control is installed and the work is done Jasper, when things are as dry as, as reasonably possible. How does that work for you guys? Yeah. So I'll make a motion. We go number three with the conditions that, what's the, do we have a date on that plan? Or a plan number? The date. No, there's the drawing number. And there's the drawing number okay. and the date. What's the date on that? 12, 15? Mm -hmm. We are green too now. Say again. What number are we? Oh, uh, number three. Number three. Negative number three. Negative three. Make a motion. We go to number three with the conditions that we discussed. Aye. 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 All right. I just, I just want to get the number off. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you have it on the... I have it on the uh, decision. But you get the date and the drawing numbers on the bottom right. Yeah. And I do have the notes of the phone calls in the folder here as part of the... Gentlemen. Yes. All right. What do we have next on the agenda there, Lou? Uh, before you go on to the next agenda. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Before you go on to the next agenda, I, I came in late. I apologize. But I was wondering what the issue was with Mike Clean. Basically what... Because this has been out there for a bit, um, when I picked up the file the other day, I told uh, Priscilla that I would be talk calling DEP to discuss the issue with them because we, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Well, the right thing to what in respect to what? That's what I meant. Say again? Why don't you respect come on to what? Our, our jurisdiction. DEP's feeling and Lou and I did a site visit here today, is that it was not jurisdictional. So real, we have no jurisdiction over that lot. Wait, why not? Because in the opinion of the Department of Environmental Protection, that it's not jurisdictional. 
There were no wetlands issues, no buffer zone issues. So we, at that point, the law is quite specific. We don't have anything to say about it. How far does it have to be from the wetlands? 100 feet. But the thing is, if he is doing excavation and creating water hazards, then what happens? Drain, like and did, erosion going at, into the wind. At that point, according to DEP, now I'm not a lawyer, but if somebody's dumping water on someone else's land, let's say, mm -hmm. that issue becomes a civil issue between party A and party B. No, because the building inspector in the highway department gave him permits to do things. He has not completed his permits, and that's what's causing the water issue. That, I can so, only go by what the Department of Environmental Protection says. I'm not uns unsympathetic to your situation. Uh, no, so I just didn't know where, what, what it was going to be about tonight. So Yeah, cool. we, we, because of this, honestly, that's why we went to DEP. Because when you know something's going to be, con it's going to be con uh, controversial, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing. Well, how, if it's, how close is it to the 100-foot barrier? I didn't measure it. You didn't measure it. No, I went. I went by the Department of Environmental Protection's files, and what about compared. the wetland across the street? In the All I can say is well, that it was considered non-jurisdictional. That's it. Yeah. We can sit here all night and, and you speculate. The DEP and DEP pulled all their charts and maps of what they have recorded, and they said it's 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 out of our hands as far as what he's doing. So how did it get in your hands to start with? They filed a request for the, I believe it was the building inspector asked him to file a, an RDA, request for determination of applicability. Okay. He filed that, paid the $25 fee, sent the paperwork down to Springfield, to the DEP regional office. Then comes to us that we have X number of days to open a hearing. We did the site visit. We consulted with the, engine, uh, the experts, the okay. wetland people from DEP. And that's how we came to So you did your job. They haven't done theirs. That's all I want to know. We've done ours. That's it's kind of like Bill Belichick. That's what I said. You guys did your We've job. We've done ours. We they have. still haven't figured out what their job is. I have no. it's over 100 feet to the uh, spring coming out of the ground across the street. Yeah, all I'm going to say is that we did. That's got a road barrier between. I don't, I'm not considered that. I worry about water coming yeah. into your property, my property, and everybody else. Yeah, well, there's a lot of issues that are not. Yeah. But that's got well, to do with we it. can sit and speculate all night long, but it's not going to do any of us any good, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it will. Well, it'll because be I feel better now leaving. Oh, here. well. <laughs> so you, then I feel better. Feel a little more positive, will you? What's that? Be a little more positive. <laughs> All right, thank you for coming in. I'm glad we could help you. <laughs> We're from the government. <laughs> so, uh, mail. Oh, we got the cutting plan. Oh, yeah, mail is part of the cutting plan? Yes. Or? I believe we have that in here. <clears throat> Where is 112 Sun Island Road? What's that? Where is 112 Sun Island Road? That's uh, the corner of uh, Sunderland uh, 116 and um, Sugarloaf Extension. Right, right at the lights. At the lights. If you went straight Bottom across, instead of taking a left to go down 116 to Sunderland, if you go straight across towards Waitley, that's Sugarloaf Extension. Okay. But it's the house on the corner. 116 oh, at right the lights. Yeah, 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 you know. Okay. Yes, <laughs> now that makes sense. All right. So we did get a letter the other day from a, uh, a wetlands, I mean, excuse me, a solar company down in... Um, Virginia was looking to put a solar array up on 116 going towards Conway. And again, I talked to the DEP because they had sent some pictures of some um, aerials in. And the decision is that they're going to have to flag the wetlands and submit an IDA to us. So I talked to this guy, Scott Remmer, down in Virginia, and he was, he was good with that. They're going to submit the paperwork over the next few months. Whereabouts is that? It's up on 116. One of the farmers is renting out some of his less productive land. I really don't know because we didn't have all the information. It was just like, these are the aerials. Obviously, yeah. we have some wetlands here. No. Okay, so down the road, we're, we're, we should be seeing something probably. Yeah, <coughs> it's kind of be an, yeah. yeah. there'll be an IDA will be filed. And then we have an invoice for the Conservation Commission for 7194 for postage. Uh, the annual meeting. March 3rd, 
if anybody's interested in going. Community Preservation Act and the CONCOM rep to that. They're doing their meetings, inviting applications for funds for the 19, 2018 round. So if you know of anybody or anything that anybody wants to fund. How much is there? Does it say how much money is in there? Nope. When's this that? is just this is our budget oh. of what we spent. Appropriated eight hundred, expended three sixty eight, so we have four hundred and thirty one dollars and fifty seven cents left in our budget. Less than seventy one dollars we just okayed. Now when's that that meeting or the start that, to submit ideas and stuff? Let's see. First meeting was January 25th here at the town hall. The next meeting is March 8th at 7 p.m. It's okay. categories eligible are historic preservation, open space and agricultural preservation, outdoor recreation, and affordable housing. And then they have a website, communitypreservation.org. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And then some more budget information. I put in for our same level funded budget again. Yeah. Seems to be working. Um, yeah, we don't ever seem to <laughs> expend the entire budget. So, so that's that. And we have our minutes from December 28th. That's the only copy or else I would we had that forest cutting plan for the water department that's been approved. So we really have not much to say about that. <coughs> this, that plan was approved by the DCR this past week. So we're set there. to read them you weren't here <laughs> <laughs> and we have submitted to us that by the Deerfield River watershed watershed based plan to maintain the health and improve the resiliency of the Deerfield River waters watershed a public document if anybody chooses to I'm late reading I would call this something you'd take into bed if you couldn't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Second. Aye. 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 Anything else there, Lou? Uh, oh, do we have to set a new. Uh, set a new day. New meeting. Our meeting. Yeah. Do you have your phone there, Ben. We can check. The twenty-second. March twenty-second. And if you, the board, would indulge me for a moment. Um, Back on January 24th at the 
Deerfield Select Board's meeting, and Mr. Matthew Natusi, I believe that's, I hope I'm not mispronouncing his name, had made a presentation to the Select Board about several wetlands issues. While I did not agree with what he was saying, uh, he had every right to have said exactly what he said and expressed his opinions, because whether I agree or not, everybody's entitled to their opinions, that we live in an era, frankly, where there's so much nastiness and ill will generated politically that we need to listen to each other. And I have to admit that I contributed greatly to the nastiness and ill will that evening, because as he was leaving the building, I was coming in, and I unloaded on him in probably the most inappropriate way I've ever acted because I think this board has always tried to treat people who appeared before us with respect whether we agreed with them whether we liked them whether we disliked them we've always tried to treat people the way we would want to be treated and I did apologize to Matt personally I sent him a message not knowing if he would accept it or not because frankly I might not have accepted it because I was an absolute total pretty much of a jerk. So I did tell him that I would make, as a representative of the Conservation Commission, I didn't want this to reflect on you guys, that this was strictly on me, and issue a public apology to him for my behavior. That being said, I do apologize. I feel terrible that I did it. I knew I was wrong the minute I did it, and I kind of uh, was, at that point, it's like, damn it all. Yeah. What do I do now? <laughs> so what do I do now? So what I'm doing is apologizing to him personally in public because he deserved the minimum of that. So now that we've done that, thank you for your indulgence. I'm going to make a motion that uh, unless we have other business on the agenda that was unforeseen 48 hours ago. Nope, nothing, nothing there. If you don't have anything in the files. Nope. We're all set. So I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 723. Yeah.